Thank you. Um, thank you, Rick. Thanks, Tech Council. Um, thank you, Big Byte. Um, I'd also like to introduce and, and welcome uh, my colleague, Tony, who is my developer, but also likes playing around with videos. So he said he'd video to videotape this and edit it and splice the slides in and all that fun stuff. And so that'll be a welcome break from coding for him. Um, keep him fresh. Keep him fresh. Um, so uh, really, really happy to be here. Thanks so much. I've, I've been, I've, I've learned a lot coming to these events. I, I, I see some folks who have, who have presented. I have enjoyed your presentations. I have learned from your presentations, and I hope that I can uh, uh, bring, bring some, bring some value and some interest to you, uh, and some, some, some maybe some new ways of, of looking at some things based on my experience in, uh, in this new company that we've started up in the last couple of years, HIPAA.host. Like I say, we've been in business. Like Rick said, we've been in business since '92. Uh, but just in the last couple of years, I've been really focusing um, uh, on, on the healthcare industry and specifically how they're impacted by, by data breaches and so forth. I, uh, I, I tried to get you guys here with a, with a rather provocative uh, uh, title, I, uh, putting, putting IT in its place. Um, if you're IT, you're the genie. Um, uh, so, um, you know, it's just like I say, a, a provocative title. Um, but, and I, maybe, maybe some of you folks have worked for a Jafar. Um, in your time, who treat IT this way, who, who, who address you the way that uh, Jafar addresses the genie. I hope you don't work there. I hope you don't work there now. Um, but also, my title actually comes from an IT company. Um, it was actually meant as a compliment. This is a, this, the, uh, I was told this after we worked with an IT company, because I do work with IT companies. I work with them well. Um, I absolutely respect the work that IT is doing, so I don't want you to think that, uh, I don't want you to think that I'm Jafar. Um, but uh, the, the, the title really comes from an IT company who, after we went through a risk assessment, um, uh, he was quick to jump on gadgets and solutions, and, and we were always pulling him back and trying to bring back to the strategic point of view. And he said, wow, you know, you, you really put IT in its place. Um, really gave us, gave us a plan to work from. So that's what we want to do. Um, because it, it goes both ways, as you know. Um, you've all worked with, uh, sometimes you've got to put the CEO in his place. Sometimes it's a lot, of, a lot of work and a lot of effort to get the CEO to take what you're saying seriously, to take your expertise seriously, and to act on the things that you know need to be done. So it goes both ways. Um, so I hope that, you know, by talking about this, what I really, my goal really here is to, is to promote communication, you know, in, in both directions, so that uh, the CEO can, can understand, the, the, understand what's going on, get the information from the expertise uh, in, the, in, the, in the IT field, and then, you know, use that to inform uh, the decisions and the budgeting and the scheduling and the things like that, which is the CEO's job. Um, so I, I, I hope that's, uh, that's uh, I can help you folks uh, work with that. Hopefully, uh, we'll give you some ideas here that will, if you're in, in the executive suite, some ideas that will help you communicate better with the IT folks, and if you're in the IT uh, department, some, some ways you can communicate uh, more effectively with your, uh, with your CEO decision makers. Um, so yeah, my, the, just to tell you a little bit about where I'm coming from, just so you understand um, uh, what I'm, where I am. I mean, my company, HIPAA.host, we are not an IT company. We are not a cybersecurity company. There's, there's great IT expertise in this room. There's great cybersecurity expertise in this room. That's not exactly what we are. Um, we work, we, we've, we, we really like to work with small businesses. Small business is really, um, is really my passion. It's what I've always uh, spent, my, spent my career on. Just keep that in mind during my presentation that I'm talking about this in terms of small business and this, some of this stuff may not apply as much or may, may need some, some tweaking and some enhancement uh, to apply to a larger institutional employer or client. But that's where I'm, that's where I'm coming from. Um, and the vertical that we've, that, we've, that we've gone after obviously um, is healthcare. And, and the reason is, is you know, do you folks know who, what is the industry hit most by data breaches today? We, you know, we see, we, people think it's, it's not banking. It's not retail. It wasn't the target breach. Um, you know, who's, who's really uh, affected most uh, these days by, by data breaches is the healthcare industry. Um, and they're way unprepared for it, especially the folks that I'm talking to, the, the, my, my client base, especially the small and medium-sized uh, healthcare companies. And the reason I like to work with them is they're facing these enormous challenges, and it's putting them out of business. It's forcing them into early retirement, and it's changing the face of uh, the landscape of healthcare today. It's, uh, you know, it, it, seems like the, some, it seems like the only way to, to succeed in healthcare is to you know, close your business down and go work for a hospital or something like that. Sometimes I think that some people want it to go that direction. I don't want it to go that direction. I want to keep uh, I want to keep the small and medium-sized healthcare practices, and so they need, they need this support to, to work on this. Um, when I talk to the to physicians and to practice managers and so forth, 
big question is always, why, why should I even care? Why do people even want this data? Sure, I'm collecting all this data about my patients. Why do they even want it? Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but probably, probably a lot of you are. Healthcare data is incredibly valuable. It's immensely more valuable, 20, 30, 40 times more valuable than just a credit card. Um, and think about it. Think, you've all had your credit card compromised, right? It's no big deal. You call the bank up, they send you a new card, they refund the money, you, you have to change your billing and stuff like that, but it's really no big deal. Uh, when people's healthcare data is compromised, it can be a big deal, a big hassle for them. It can be extremely expensive and it can, it can, it can, it can drive people absolutely crazy. Um, the, the reason it's so valuable is, first of all, it's the, it's the gold standard of identity theft. It's a lot more than just one, one account number uh, someplace. It's everything that you need to know to file tax returns for, these, for this person, um, take out loans in this person's name and all that, all that sort of thing. People are also using it to get health care. Um, uh, medical identity theft is, is actually driving uh, uh, healthcare theft. People are getting letters in the mail, just following up, uh, see how you're feeling after your kidney transplant, and people are like, uh, <laughs> I didn't have a kidney transplant. Um, and sometimes there was a kidney transplant, and sometimes there actually wasn't a kidney transplant. Sometimes it's actually just Medicare fraud, um, and things like that are happening. So these are big ticket, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a kidney transplant. If you, can get, if you can get the check for a kidney transplant, that's a, that's a pretty good score. So this, this, healthcare, this healthcare data uh, is important. And, uh, and of course, you know, as, as you know, they're all, they're all being, even the small guys, they're, they're, they're forced to take it seriously. They'd rather not, but they're forced to uh, by the regulations, by HIPAA. There's all kinds of liabilities. Uh, you, all, you all know how that works. And so that's, that's why they're, they're having to take it seriously. Thank goodness. Um, thank goodness. But I'm going to try to talk to you. So that, you know, that's, that's just where I'm coming from. Uh, that's, that's, that's my particular focus, my particular interest. Um, but I hope that uh, the, the stuff that I'll be sharing with you, this will be stuff that, uh, that, that we've learned in, in working with these small organizations, ways that uh, we've found to communicate to the executive suite, help them make the decisions, help them understand the, the threat and take it seriously and take action on it. And I hope that it will apply to, to your work. Um, I hope it would apply to other verticals, other industries, uh, not, just, uh, not just healthcare. So um, the, this is, this is sort, of our, sort of my, my agenda that I'm going to go through today. Um, we're going to talk about you know, uh, uh, looking at things beyond just, uh, beyond just the IT department, involving the whole organization, um, all of the knowledge throughout the organization, and integrating it all together in a, in a cohesive risk management plan. So the, you know, the, the two basic phases, risk assessment, looking at, the, looking at the problems that you have, and then risk management, risk mitigation. Um, uh, dealing with those problems and, and fixing the problems that you find. And again, we're gonna be, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it as in, in terms of you know, going beyond just, just IT, going beyond just the, the high-tech stuff. I don't actually want, I don't want to um, uh, dwell on that too much because I actually think I've seen, I've seen presentations here. I've heard other presentations at this group. It seems like this group, I've talked to folks here. It's pe pe I know you guys get it. I know you guys get it. Um, uh, so, so I don't want to belabor that, but we'll share a couple of stories. If anybody's got an uh, uh, interesting case study of something like this, uh, feel free to pipe up. Um, and then what I, want to, what I really want to share with you is, is what we've learned and what we've developed working with folks. How do you, how do you then actually organize this? You know, it's, this is all very easy for me to tell you. You've got to have a strategic approach. Um, I'm going to show you what we do. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you exactly uh, how we do this, how we rank priorities uh, for the decision makers and to help them figure out how to schedule and, and budget the stuff that they're, they're going to be doing. Um, the reason that we look beyond just IT, as you know, you know, uh, the, 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 big, the big breaches, the big exploits, the, the things that are creating huge liabilities for companies are not necessarily always the high-tech stuff. Sometimes it's boring, stupid stuff. The, you know, the PR department always wants, oh, it's the most sophisticated, you know, targets, oh, they were just, oh, they were just brilliant. They, no, it wasn't. You, you had a default password on your, come on, guys. Um, it was not, it was not high-tech, Mission Impossible style stuff. That stuff can happen. Um, but if we're looking at stuff realistically, if we're really evaluating the likelihood of things happen, I'm a lot more worried about, you know, in my, it, with my clients, I'm a lot more worried about a doctor leaving his iPhone behind at the restaurant. I'm a lot more worried about the, the, the box of paper files in the back of a car. I'm a lot more worried about a laptop smash and grab and things like that. I'm not so worried about this dude. Um, but that's, that's, what they always, that's what they always talk about. Um, so what are the threats? In, in, uh, in my particular field, we see, we see three really top threats that are, that are not, not specifically technical, not specifically IT uh, related. Um, and this is specifically for healthcare. This is from the Verizon Data Breach Report, which I'm sure you're all familiar with and uh, read up on. It's full, full of great information. But for healthcare, basically the top three are insider misuse. That's not a breach of security. It's a breach of trust. That's trusted employees, contractors, and so forth, um, abusing the trust that we place in them and, and, and taking this valuable information. Uh, number two, user error. 
um, just human beings um, uh, doing, doing the wrong thing, making mistakes, unclear policies and procedures. They're not sure exactly what they do, what to do. They make up their own policies and procedures because what we, what we told them to do doesn't actually work um, and, and things like that. And then loss and theft. Um, loss and theft has actually uh, went down. Uh, the, the year before, it was, it was the number one cause of data breaches in uh, the healthcare industry. It's actually gone down, actually, thanks to IT, because people got the message, people saw the problem, started finally getting serious about encrypting, saying, no, really, give me that laptop. Yes, you're not going to have it for eight hours. I'm so sorry. Give me the laptop. We're encrypting it. It's actually, actually made some progress on that. Um, so that's, that's a big kudos to, to IT, getting serious about that and, and insisting on that. So that's why it's number three now. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, the big issue is the insider misuse stuff. Um, so you know, how, you, you've got to look at this stuff and you've got to figure out how you're going to address this stuff. And it may not be high tech stuff. It may not be new software that you're going to buy. It may be, um, it may not. You know, the big thing that comes up for, for, for insider misuse, about the only way that you can really mitigate it, is you've got to be reviewing your logs. You know all your software is logging a million things. You're generating, how many, how many hundreds of pages of log files do you think you're generating a day? 500, 600, uh, depending on how big your organization is and all, all your systems. But you've got to have systems in place. You know, there's an IT angle here, uh, software, behavioral analysis, and things like that to, um, to be able to sift through that. But you've got to be doing that. Uh, what we like to see people doing, and by the way, nobody in healthcare is doing this except press and you know, some, some big organizations. Uh, this is a, it's, a, it's a requirement of HIPAA, and we see almost nobody doing this. Um, so we're really, we're really pushing this. Is, you know, get, let's get some of this behavioral analysis software and start looking at this stuff. What do you look for? Um, you know, in my industry, we like to look for people logging in remotely at strange times of day. How come the medical assistant is logging in from home? Is, is that necessary? Are, is that to do their job, or are they doing something else? Um, how many records per day are they accessing? Um, if uh, if uh, somebody needs to access, if this job typically accesses 40 records, 40 patient records in the course of a day, it's a big red flag if somebody suddenly is accessing 500 patient records um, in the course of a day. Um, spot checks also. All of my clients are saying, yeah, we don't let people do, do EPHI, electronic protected health information. We don't let them send that in email. I'm like, that's great. That's great. How do you know? Because I guarantee you they're doing it. I guarantee you doing it. Let's, you know, let's, do we have access to your email accounts? Oh. Well, let's get that. We've got we to make sure that we can do that. You know, go in and just do a spot check. Um, just scheduling, scheduling regular spot checks to find out if people are doing what you're, what you're telling them to do. And then training. Uh, training is interesting in terms of insider misuse. Training isn't going to make a dishonest employee honest. So what's the point of training? It's, 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 it's covering your own liabilities. Um, if, when, a, when an employee breaches that trust, um, it can go two ways. And we've seen it go two ways uh, from the Department of Health and Human Services investigating data breaches in healthcare. We've seen cases where uh, somebody's, somebody's data gets breached, they make a complaint, it goes to OCR, there's an investigation started, they come and they trace it to this place, they find out, they, then they start looking at the logs because it's all being recorded and they find out who it was. Um, and that goes badly um, for the practice who suffers something like that. Completely different way is a practice who's proactively reviewing logs, finds the, the, the bad behavior, terminates the employee, and is driving that process and, and, is, and is doing it proactively uh, rather than reactively. So that's what's so important about insider misuse. Um, user error, all of those things, same things apply, logs and, and training and all of that stuff, but also just, just looking at things realistically. I was just talking to somebody the other day, and um, they're not allowed to send EPHI over email. They have a special, they work with, with Medicaid, and they have a special state portal that they create, and they're supposed to use this uh, for, uh, for communicating patient data from one provider to another. Um, the fact of the matter is, it's slow, it's terrible, the interface is junk, sometimes it goes down, and when that happens, people fire up their Yahoo account. Um, they just do. They just do. Um, so you've got to look realistically at what are people actually doing. You know, we, we've, we've set things up. You know, we, we could look at it from a, from a narrow IT perspective. We've solved this problem. We've given them the tool that they need. Sure, are they using it? Um, so, so things like that. Um, because as you, as you know, um, staff won't do what you expect. They will do only what you inspect. Um, so you've got, to be, you've got to be keeping an eye on things like that. And that's a, that's a management function. Uh, that's, a, uh, that's a supervisor function. Needing IT support to do that. Like I say, you know, those, those log analysis and things like that. Uh, but that is, that is a management function, and it's critical. And it's critical to get to, to get... To, to get the CEO to understand that. It's critical to get them to understand that you don't, you know, sure, we're in, a, a, installing this log analysis software. It's not a magic bullet. Somebody's got to look at it. 
Somebody's going to have to look at it. Somebody's, you know, if, you know, if, if we've got automated emails that go out to give people red flags, somebody's got to be looking at that and evaluating that. And that's a management function. Um, as far as loss and theft, I mean, like I say, good job IT. IT has, has really um, knocked that down. Um, and it's become less of an issue for us in healthcare. Um, but I mean, I, we still see people who are using USB drives and, 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 and crazy stuff uh, for, for moving data around, trying to get them all away from that. Um, but also policies and procedures and training, getting people to understand, hey, do what the IT guy says. Hey, put it on the, on the server. Don't put it on the, don't, don't burn a CD and take it home and things like that. And if you're having problems with that, if that's not working, if things are slowing down and it's ineffective and it's inefficient, that's a problem we need to know about. Bring it, bring it to us and so, so that we can, we can work with IT and get those problems fixed, get those things smoothed out. And IT wants to make those problems fixed. IT, IT wants to make, uh, to make those things smooth. That's what, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, so, so, you know, this, that, that's about the, the, the risk assessment, you know, finding out all of the, 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 the non-technical, non-IT things out there that are posing threats to you. Um, it also applies to how you're going to actually mitigate the, the, the threats that you do identify. What are you going to do? Are you going to, it's not always um, a new gadget that you need to buy. Sometimes the simplest solution is, is the best solution. I think this is Einstein who said, or it's at least attributed to him and probably five other people, but keep everything as simple as possible, but not any simpler. So I'm not saying, you know, that there, there's not an IT solution here. Keep everything as simple as possible, not any, any, any simpler. Um, I, I see this all the time. I see some really creative, clever solutions. I'm sure you have too. Um, uh, we talk to IT and, and they say, uh, you know, oh, it's going to take forever to get uh, those laptops encrypted in the desktop. You know, we, it, we, we have to shut it down and you know, the docs is going to be docs breathing down our neck. It's like, okay, fine, let's get a schedule going. In the meantime, can we have some cable locks? Can we just lock them to a desk? Um, that's a great way to just stop the, you know, grab and go um, sort of thing. Um, something simple like that. Uh, I was just talking to somebody, she was telling me that, uh, uh, Sandia did this. Um, you, know, you know, shutting down the USB ports is a, uh, is a great thing to do because um, you don't want people being able to bring in their own devices and take huge amounts of data. The, the, the potential impact of something like that is huge. So you want to shut down those, those, uh, uh, those ports. You got, you got clever IT ways of doing that, group policies and all that stuff. They bought the cement putty over at Lowe's and they just jammed them into the, all the USB ports. So all the USB ports have rocks on them now. Nobody's using those USB ports. Um, so simple things like that, you know, little duct tape and bailing wire solutions. Don't, don't disregard them. That, that, can be, uh, that can be an effective uh, way to do it. Um, on the flip side, I mean, you have to find the balance. On the flip side, sometimes IT says to me, I really don't want to encrypt email. And I go, okay, all right. Um, so can we just have a policy? I'm like, you could absolutely have a policy that there's no encrypted email. And they go, great, we'll do that. I go, okay, wait. We're going to document that policy, right? And they're like, okay, yeah, that's her job. Okay, and we're going, to, we're going to inform the staff about that, right? And we're going to get that integrated into our training, right? And we're going to be doing audit log reviews, right? And we're going to be doing uh, spot checks to make sure. Oh, and we're going to have a sanction policy, right? What happens when people, you know, ignore your, your guidance here? And, you know, you, you're going to fire people over this, right? Okay, maybe we want a technical solution. <laughs> so, like I say, keep everything as simple as possible, just no simpler. Uh, so, so, so that's that. Um, so with all of that, you know, when, you've, when you've done all of this, when you've, you've done your risk assessment, um, you've got a whole bunch of recommendations for, for your risk ma management, how you're going to mitigate all of these risks uh, that, you're, you, that you've identified, how are you actually going to do it? Um, you, got, you guys know, you can, you can sit all day. How, how, how deep do you want to dig? How many, how many problems do you want me to find today? Um, you want me to find 50? You want me to find 100? You want me to find 300? Um, how, many, how many recommendations do you want me to make? Would you like 20? Would you like 300? You, 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 can, you can go all day. There's, there's, there's no end to it. Um, and that's a huge problem. That's a, that's a huge problem. A lot of CEOs, they, they, get, the, they, they get IT on this. They get, a, they get an assessor on this. And, the, and what they get is this giant pile of, I don't know what the hell to do. Um, so how do you do it? How do you, how, do you, how do you get this stuff done? How do you go from this list, this, this massive list, um, to an actual plan? How do you actually prioritize things um, and, and figure out how you're going to tackle this stuff with your limited resources, your limited schedule, your limited budget, um, and all of that? And that's what the risk assessment is supposed to be doing. The risk assessment is supposed to be um, your strategic plan for how you're going to tackle this stuff. It's your risk assessment slash risk management plan. So how are you going to do that? I'm just going to show you how, how, how we've been doing it for our clients, um, and uh, it seems to work well. And, and the, CEO, uh, the CEOs really respond to this. It makes sense to them. Um, it's very helpful that, for them, and they can actually use this and actually make progress over the course of the year. In, in our industry, the most important thing is progress. You're not going to get everything done, but if the HIPAA auditor shows up, you want to show some check marks. 
Um, so that's that's what we that's what we focus on. So your risk assessment. You, you, you folks know about, know about this stuff. You're going to be looking at uh, uh, threats, you know, actual things out there, actors and agents out there that could do you harm, either advert, inadvertently or advertently. Um, uh, you're looking for those people. And then, then what are the actual vulnerabilities in your system, uh, the actual weaknesses in your system? Every system has vulnerabilities and weaknesses all the time. Uh, what are they? What are, the, what are the vulnerabilities that could be exploited? What are the things that you've done right now? What are the existing controls in place, uh, the password policies, or the two-factor authentication, or the encryption, or the, or the training, or whatever you've got in place to mitigate, uh, to mitigate those risks? You know, that's, and that's the basic formula, a threat acting on a vulnerability, mitigated by controls. That's how you determine uh, what, your, what your risk level is. So you're going to be documenting all of this in your risk assessment uh, report that you're preparing uh, for, for management. And then this, this, I think, is very important. I see, this, I see this commonly done the other way. I think it's a little bit upside down. Um, so I would encourage you, I would recommend that you really focus on the vulnerabilities, that your document be organized according to vulnerabilities, not according to controls, uh, not according to, to gadgets or systems or, or policies and procedures or things that you can do to fix things. Because that can just become a list. We want to look at the actual vulnerabilities. Uh, it's the vulnerabilities that the risk is attached to. Uh, there's, not a, there's, not a, there's not a vulnerability to encryption. There's not a vulnerability to not encryption. There's a vulnerability to a system that encryption could, could fix. So focus on the, on the vulnerabilities. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Here's, here's some, these, are, these are from uh, an actual risk assessment. I've brought um, a risk assessment uh, report document uh, that was prepared recently uh, by our firm. Be welcome. be happy to share that with you. These are from an actual risk assessment. So this is the kind of language you're looking for. Um, you know, what could actually happen here? You know, we're talking about a threat, you know, exercising a vulnerability, a, a threat, an unauthorized person accessing systems over the internet. Um, so that's the kind of language you're doing. That's the kind of vulnerability-focused language uh, that you're doing. This is, and this is the kind of thing that, uh, that a CEO can understand. Oh, yeah, I get it. I, I, I get that somebody could call me up. Somebody could call up our staff and pose as IT and get somebody's password and things like that. Um, they, can, they, they, can, they can understand that. You don't need to be, um, you don't need to be a technolo technology person to, to get your head around this stuff. And so this is the way I like to organize a risk assessment uh, document. And then for each one of the vulnerabilities uh, that you identify, um, we're gonna, we want to document the, the threats that are out there. What's, what, what are we actually worried about? Are we worried about hackers? Are we worried about un dishonest employees? Are we worried about floods? Are we worried about, what are we worried about here? What's the threat? Um, you know, and the existing controls, the, the controls that we have in place. Um, people are always telling me, I'm not doing anything. You've got to help me. I'm not doing anything. Great thing about a risk assessment is that we first document everything you're doing right, because you're doing a lot of things right. Just having a password, that's great. You got a password, that's super. You got a lock on the front door, that's super. Let's write that down. And it might be the first time that this stuff gets written down, and it's, it's the kind of thing you want to lead with in, in a HIPAA audit. You want to lead with all the things we're doing right. Um, so, so we're doing that, and then what we're doing is, you know, based on that, we want to evaluate the, we want to evaluate the risk. We want to assign some kind of risk level. We want to consider uh, the likelihood that the threat will act. Again, are we worried about Tom Cruise coming down on the cable, or are we worried about, um, you know, the, the 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 box of paper being used to prop open the door to the server room, um, things like that. Um, and, you know, and evaluating the, effect of the, the effectiveness of the controls. You know, how, how strong are these passwords? Um, how, how, how well is this going to work? And based on all of that, and, and then, mo very important, what's the impact? What would actually happen? Um, and we see this all the time. We see, you know, we, you've got to uh, consider the impact of a, of a potential breach for, for guiding your, uh, uh, your, your, your process here, for guiding what you're going to take care of. Um, I'm talking to a, to a client right now. Who's, they're worried about contractors who work with a single patient, one contractor, one patient. I'm like, well, you know, not to be cold-hearted, but um, if that person does something wrong, that's a one-patient breach. That's kind of a manageable risk, um, and that's going to move things down your list of priorities when you, when you consider things like that. Um, considering all of that, considering the likelihood, effectiveness, and the impact, um, you're going to come up with some way of assigning risk levels. People can, you can do it quantitatively. I mean, you, and, you, you, some of you may work for organizations that do it, you know, excruciatingly, quantitatively, uh, real actuarial tables kind of stuff. Um, my approach, especially for a small business, is a lot more qualitative. I try to do a little bit of a hybrid. I, like to, I make a spreadsheet. I rank, you know, okay, I, I, and I'll rank my likelihood and my effectiveness and my, um, and, uh, uh, my impact and calculate a score, and I'll sort by that. But ultimately, I'm making a judgment. Ultimately, I'm making a pretty qualitative judgment about that. And I like to go with... These, these are the words I like to go with. Uh, steal these words. They're not my words. 
Um, anybody can use these words. They're in the dictionary. But I don't like low, medium, high. I like critical, serious, marginal. You know, I could go kind of either way on whether I'm worried about that. And then negligible. You know, the negligible stuff, we like to have it documented. But this is the stuff that you've... You kind of got you kind of got this knocked. You know, you oh, you got a backup system in place. Yeah, it's 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 going good. Oh yeah, you got an uninterrupt, uninterruptible power with the backup and all that stuff. Well, it's still documented. It's still a, it's still a vulnerability. Um, you can't ever eliminate these risks. So I like to have them in the uh, in the in the negligible section. We got this one taken care of. Then for each one of these vulnerabilities, you know, that's that's where we're looking at uh, the the new controls that you're going to propose uh, from your expertise. Uh, what can we do? So if we're worried about, you know, internet access, hey, uh, two-factor authentication. I'm really pushing two-factor authentication. Big, big factor of two-factor. I love these things. Anybody use these? I love, I love those. Um, um, you know, training for, for phishing awareness, um, you know, testing. Let's do some dry runs on our, on our backups. Does, does it really work? Can we really back up our data? Can we really restore our data? It's backing up. Fine. Can we get it back? <laughs> yeah, the backup looks good. Um, great, great. Um, yep. So things like that. So, so, so now what you've got is you've got, you know, all these controls. So here's your list of controls, right? But they're now mapped to, um, to risk levels. They're mapped to actual vulnerabilities. They're mapped to risk levels. And they're mapped to that, uh, that uh, uh, four, four stage or five or however many the risk levels you want to identify. They're, we now know that this will mitigate a critical risk or a serious risk and so on. And you're not just providing a list. You're not just, you're not just the gadget guy who's got a million things that you could do. Um, uh, that's just not helping your CEO. He doesn't know what to do with that. Um, and, um, and, you know, and he makes fun of you. Uh, you know, he, he thinks you're this guy. You don't want to be this guy. You don't, you, you don't, you don't want to be this guy. You don't need to be this guy. So how do, you, how do you not be this guy? What's the language that your CEO understands? A lot of, lot of models you could go with. Cost benefit. Right? Cost benefit is how CEOs are, are making a lot of their decisions, so I like to go with that. It can be simple. It can be easy. Um, uh, for each one of the controls uh, that we recommend, I like to just do a quick cost benefit score. Um, you know, for, for, for the benefit, um, I want to consider how bad is the risk that we're fixing here. I want to consider how effectively we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fix it. You know, is this going to just completely solve it, or is this just a small piece of the puzzle? And also, how many risks does this mitigate? Usually, you'll find um, that a single control will mitigate a number of risks that you've identified in your, um, in your risk assessment. That becomes a more valuable, a higher benefit uh, control to implement. So that boosts your, your benefit score. And then cost, we want to consider dollars, obviously, but also hours. How much time is it going to take for the, for the staff? And, and the gray hairs, how much time in trouble? How complex is this? How likely is it that we're going to try it and we're going to, we're going to screw it up? Um, we're, going to, we're going to do it wrong. Um, that, you know, and then we're going to have to try it again, and it's going to be frustrating. It's going to make things worse. You know, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a cost uh, uh, factor that needs to be considered. You can go through and you can just assign, you can just kind of pick numbers and say, I'm, I'm going to call that a 5, I'm going to call that a 10. That's an awesome one. Um, and you can do that. Uh, the more quantitative that you make it, uh, the more, you know, somebody in management is going to appreciate it. He's going to like seeing those numbers and feeling like there's something objective going on here. Um, so um, so I'll, just show you, I'll show you what I do. Um, this, is, this is what we do. We, 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 we document all of the vulnerabilities, and we have, like I said, we have the, we have the vulnerabilities, we have the, uh, the threats. We map, we map our vulnerabilities to uh, HIPAA specifications, of course. Uh, we're working right now on mapping all of our controls to uh, NIST 853, um, so we're working on that. So they got all that information, lots of places they can reach out and find more information uh, that's not just in that document. And then they all have controls, new controls that we're recommending. And so, this, so we, we pull them all at the end. They're all sprinkled through the document, but then we pull them all at the end of the document, and we organize it like this. Um, so what we've got here, we've got this, this particular control. You, you can see it's implement and document secure procedures. Um, this is just a policy, a procedure that the practice manager could write in an afternoon. So it's a very low cost. Uh, control that can be implemented. That's what's bringing it up the list here. It's also a very high benefit control. This particular control will mitigate a critical risk, a serious risk, two marginal risks. Um, all of that together, we have some weighting algorithms in here, and that gives us a benefit score. Um, so that's how we've, we've got a little bit of quantitative uh, justification for the benefit score that we're coming up with. Our cost score is a little bit more qualitative. We're not doing any, any algorithms there. We just kind of go through and we go, yeah, that's a one, that's a four, that's a five. We go for one, one through five. Um, and we can tweak that. You know, if we sit down with the client and they go, you're dreaming if you think that's a two, man. I'm like, okay, fine. We'll change it to a five. 
Um, and, and with that, once we've got our benefit score, we've got our cost score, that gives us a, a, a real score, a priority score. And that's what we sort by. We do a little bit of multiplying, get rid of the decimal points and things like that, uh, sort by that. Our clients find this really helpful to work with something like this. Um, it brings a lot of really low cost things up to the top of the list. Low cost, high benefit, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for bang for the buck. Yeah, Mark? Your score ranges relative to each control, or is there a, a, a range of scores? Zero to 200, zero to 300. Um, which, you, you're talking about the priority score? Yeah. Um, it, it, it's on the control. Right. It's, it's, th there is a relative connection. The way we're doing the calculation is we're adding up all the benefits and figuring out the percentage, right. what this, what this okay. represents for the whole project. Okay. Um, so there is, there is some, 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 some relative ranking uh, like that. The score itself is, is, is just a number. Yeah. It's, it, it doesn't really mean anything. But it doesn't map to anything. 140 out of it's not out of anything. It's the, it's the number that comes out of this, and, 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 and we tweak it. We, we don't hesitate to tweak it by math because it's just sure. to, make it, to make it clear and, and multiply by 10 or whatever because it's just a ranking. It's just a ranking tool. Um, and we also don't hesitate to, d d to change from this. You know, um, uh, uh, this, is, this, is, this is the way to guide, a way to, to, way to get the process started. Um, but I feel that it's still a qualitative process doing this and it still takes expertise and, and, and experience and good business judgment to really do this, but it can be an extremely helpful way to start the process because like I say, um, you, you know how it is. When you do this, you'll have, you'll have, this one has 71 recommended controls. So, you know, there's all this, these are all the things that, then we like gave up. We're like, okay, that's, that's, that's enough. We've dug deep enough. That's enough uh, for them to swallow. Um, but, you know, some of this stuff is very high cost, very low benefit, uh, not worth getting to. We still want it documented. Um, we still want to be able to show an auditor, oh, we knew about that, and we're working towards it. Um, we haven't gotten there yet, uh, but it's definitely part of our, uh, part of our corrective action So how, plan. Do you, uh, how do you, within that team, know whether those controls, multiple controls apply to a single uh, vulnerability? I mean, I, what I see up there is like three categories of vulnerabilities that you could have more than one control on it. How do you know? Oh, every, yeah, I mean, every vulnerability has more than a single control, for sure. Um, but, but some of the controls are uh, applied to, to, to multiple. I mean, two-factor authentication will reduce, uh, uh, will reduce, a, uh, anti will reduce phishing threats um, and, and, and other threats. It'll reduce, you know, the risk of disgruntled employees having access they shouldn't have and things like that. So, you know, a single control uh, may help with, with multiple vulnerabilities. And that's why I like to focus, that's why I like to structure the document from the vulnerability point of view. When you're looking at a vulnerability, you'll see a whole bunch of, of controls uh, recommended. You, I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, you're, you're going in, you're going to score things, you're going to come up with, you know, a ranking, but you, you, you're not looking at the duplicity of effort or multiple controls. I mean, how does that get communicated to the customer? Um, well, not to, not, to, not to shirk the question entirely, but like I say, there, this, is, this is a starting point. Um, we, don't, we don't expect IT to, to, to follow this to the letter. It's a, way of, uh, it's a way of organizing and knowing what we can definitely ignore and what's really in our top priority. Um, um, so, it, so it's not a fully quantitative way of, it's not gonna, it's not gonna drive, uh, um, you know, there's still management decisions and IT decisions that have to be made and to evaluate things like that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, and that's the expertise, you know, that's the expertise of the IT staff, that's the expertise and experience of, of management, the practice manager in my case, you know, um, they're, the, they're the ones who, who ultimately make the decisions uh, about how they're going to tackle things. But this can be a helpful way of just, you know, get, getting started, getting some, getting some basic priorities, um, priorities set. And, and it brings a lot of things up that, that you might otherwise, that you might miss, that you might ignore because it seems so simple and why, well, that, that, that's, we shouldn't work on that first, that's, that's too simple. That might, be, that might be exactly what you should work on first, uh, the simple stuff that has, that has high impact. Does it cost uh, uh, bring up your score? Uh, so, and then there's cost relationship? Yeah, yeah, you know, the, the, the higher, it, you know, all things being equal, the higher cost is gonna bump down and the higher benefit is gonna bump up. Um, so that's, that's what we're getting. Or is it based upon all the other numbers as well? Now, all of these numbers are distilled into the benefit and the cost. So the only thing that's, that, that what's feeding this is these two columns, benefit and cost. Yep. Okay. 
So I don't know how you guys, you know, do this stuff, tackle this stuff, figure out these priorities, um, but, it's, but we found that that's the, that's the biggest challenge for, um, for our clients. And the IT folks that we work with, um, because we do work, we, like I say, we're not an IT company, we don't, we don't come in and do these solutions. Um, we work with, with the, the, the trusted staff or vendors that they're already working with. We're not trying to put anybody out of a job or point fingers and tell anybody that they're doing their job wrong. Uh, our clients are mostly doing their job right. They don't, they don't come to us unless they're already doing their job right and taking this stuff seriously. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, this, this, is, this, is, this is to help them, and, and they, they appreciate it as well. That we, we generally don't come, up, come to them with anything surprising. Um, you know how it is. You're like, you know, if, if, when a risk assessor tells you, you need to do this, you're always like, yeah, I know. I've been meaning to get around to that, and I can't get my CEO to pay for that, and so on, and so on, and so on. This is a way where the CEO can go, oh, I see. We have to do this, and then, hey, there's budget. Um, now, there, now there's budget. So, so like I say, it's, it's a way of, way of improving the collaboration uh, between, between the IT staff and the, uh, and the management. And the management. So that's all I had to share with you. Uh, happy to take some questions and, and, and chat some more. Uh, I'll tell you a couple of things. I do a, uh, I do a, a HIPAA-specific lunch and learn a couple of times a month. It's free lunch here downtown um, where we talk about, you know, specifically HIPAA. It's, it's, it's a lot of practice managers come, some physician owners come. If you know anybody in this space, if you're interested in the space, want to learn more about it, learn more about the regulatory stuff and the strategic stuff, we don't get into, uh, we don't get into any technology, any, any real techie stuff. We talk, we're talking about it on a very high-level strategic and compliance uh, uh, angle, so if you have any interest in that. Would, would love to have you, would love to buy you lunch and sit down and, and, and talk about that. So the next one is uh, February 4th. Get it on, um, register for it on our, on our website. And um, that's Twitter. Um, if you wanna, if you like talking about cybersecurity and encryption and stuff like that, let's follow each other and, and, and talk about that stuff and, and share info on, uh, on Twitter. And uh, otherwise, thank you so much for, for your time. Yeah, Mark. Do you find that awareness is the single largest issue? Oh. In your, in your client base? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's also the single largest divider between my client base and my not client base. Um, you know, right? Um, so um, uh, generally, the people who come to us are the people who who have the awareness, are worried about this, are staying up late at night worrying about this. Um, and I talk to folks who, you know, just don't get it, and it becomes clear so fast. I can't help you. The, the guy, who, the guy who told me, um, you know, why does anybody even want this data? I go, well, and I tell him, and he goes. You know, if they want it that bad, they're going to get it. Okay, <laughs> you're right. You know what? You're right. They are. They are. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a huge issue. Um, and then, yeah, but yeah, awareness in the staff as well. You know, what, what's really important, um, particularly with HIPAA, is getting folks to understand um, HIPAA is not a bunch of bureaucratic red tape. It's not this hurdle that the mean old federal government has, has put on, making it harder for us to be in business. I get all that. I, you know, I'm, I'm very sympathetic to anybody who wants to say, darn, the government's making my job harder. I get you. Um, but this isn't one of those things. This is stuff you've got to be doing. You've got to be doing this. Um, so it's really important. I always, I always emphasize, hey, patient privacy, it's, it's important. It's a civil right. You know, what, who, who investigates uh, data breaches in healthcare? The Health and Human Services Office of Civil Rights. Um, so patient privacy is considered a civil right. If you break, breach somebody's privacy, you have violated their civil rights, as if you had discriminated against them on race or religion. And who comes after you? Civil rights attorneys. I don't know if you've ever dealt with the civil rights attorneys. Those are the crusaders and the idealists of the legal profession, right? And they will come after you. You will be the oppressor who has you know, violated the rights of the little guy, and they will love to make an example out of you. So yeah. That's, that's the kind of awareness. I, I don't like to do scare tactics. I hate to go, you know, oh man, $100,000 fine, $700,000 fine, you know. But come on, you, you, you do have to know about that. It does happen. To that point, yeah. Michael, the fines are pretty hefty. The fines are, they're, 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 it's a death penalty. You know, you know, especially for the clients that I'm working with, I mean, we see, we see um, you know, 13 physician practice, $750,000 fine. You know, um, that, you know just, just, and that was, for a, that, was for a, that was for a laptop smash and grab, is what that was for. Um, 12 physician practice in Massachusetts, uh, it was dermatology practice, lost flash drive, wasn't stolen, no evidence it was ever used. HIPAA comes with a presumption of harm. You have to prove that it wasn't used. If you don't know where it is, you can't prove it. Sure, it's probably sitting in the bottom of a landfill. Sure, somebody probably just knocked, you know, elbowed it into a trash can one day. You don't know where it is. $150,000 fine for that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's serious. It's serious. 
Is it something that liability coverage would address at all? That's what we want to talk about at an upcoming um, at an upcoming uh, event. Um, uh, you know, to largely, no. You know, a lot of insurance uh, uh, you know won't won't cover if you broke the law. Uh, won't pay your won't pay your parking tickets, right? Um, so, um, but you know th that's why you need cyber breach insurance. It's special specialty insurance. And Rick and I, we've been talking about bringing in an underwriter uh, from up in Denver who specializes in this because it's really hard to find this expertise in New Mexico. So yeah, look look for that. Yeah. So the question for you mm -hmm. as far as um, you know some of the SMB customers you work with, and this is more my ignorance of how HIPAA reporting metrics work, but it seems to me based on you know. I lost a thumb drive with potentially up to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of patients' potential findings in records. What thumb drive? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I don't know the whole story on that particular case. People ask me about that all the time, and I wonder about it. I, what I imagine happened, I don't know, but what I imagine happened is they went, uh-oh, we lost thumb drive. Uh-oh, we better do the right thing. But it's, we, it's supposed to be self Well, it's, it, they're, they're, so they, I think what happened there is they reported it themselves. But the reason they reported it themselves is because they don't know where it is, and the last thing they want is for a breach to happen. It gets traced back to them, and somebody goes, I got your thumb drive. Um, and you know, the, 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 that's going to be much, much worse. So I think what was going on there is they were thinking, well, better, better for us to do it than for it to come and surprise us like that because they didn't know what happened to this thing. So I think that's what happened. That's what they did. And they, they issued a press release. It was the, it's the saddest press release I've ever seen. It said something like, we are disappointed with the amount of this settlement. I'm like, yeah, you're disappointed. Um, you know, and they said, you know, look, it was never used. No, there, was no, there was no financial information on it. We're, we're disappointed. And they said, we're going to pay the fine. Uh, we're we're going to pay the, the settlement uh, rather than fight it. We can't fight it. We can't fight these guys anymore. So they decided to cut a check for $150,000 um, because they just couldn't deal with it anymore. Yeah. But yeah, no, there's, you know, there's, there's, things can be reported all kinds of, all kinds of ways. And, and the worst way to get reported is, um, you know, I don't know, patient class action suit, things like that. They still would have to go through the breach notification process, though, right? Yeah. They were addition to the 150,000. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, and they had to call the press yeah. and say we're stupid, we're stupid, and, and, and all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, because there's, there's those requirements as well. If it's over a certain amount, you have to flagellate yourself um, in, in public, in the press, um, and all kinds of all kinds of fun, fun stuff. And uh, you know, that, and that can be that can be sometimes the, the 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 biggest problem. You know, small practice, you can lose all your patients. You can lose all your patient all your patients. I'm not I'm not referring to those guys anymore. Those guys were in the press. Nobody wants that. Yeah. Any other questions for Michael? Okay, well, thank you, Michael. Thank you all so much.